have vowed my life to this thing. I just, I just found out, I just had another encounter on the matter of prayer. Hey. Hey. Uh, Jasper, it is now that we are going to pray. <laughs> now, I don't know what I've been doing before, self. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Holy Ghost, Gabu, Skefe, Pepe, Adei, De Kabu, Baba, Ai, Oh, Spirit of Prayer. This is the decree of the waters. This was is like wine in my belly. It is bursting like vent, looking for where to overflow. He said, Give me all tenants. There is an avalanche coming from the spirit, a deluge, a weight of God about to descend into the hearts of men. Priesthood can be hidden from men, but it's not hidden in the spirit. I am here looking for men that will be sent. Except messengers are sent. A generation will be without a voice. The tokens of God will be lost. Witnesses will be scarce. The name of the Lord will be put on the mud. Find me! A generation will wander in darkness. Until God finds men that he can send. And Noah builded an altar. This is the first introduction of the word altar in the scripture. Are you with me? Even though. Even though. There was a sacrifice made by Cain and Abel. But this is the first time that there is a deliberate move to set up an altar. Are you getting the point? That's why I chose this one. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So in this place, there is a deliberate move. We don't know how Noah stumbled on the wisdom with which he set up an altar. Because the setting of an altar, hmm, you know, it's easy for you to say that uh, my altar, this, yeah, let's set up an altar. And You see, in the new covenant consistent with the purpose of god and the agenda that god wants to execute the setting up of the altar that have the ability to bring the inversion of god varies it is a specific wisdom it is a specific wisdom and strategy that is needed to set up an altar generally we will teach you the general demands and structures of an altar are you getting the point but consistent with the business that god has told you to be involved in are you getting what i'm saying did you add anything to my voice consistent with it you will have to know how to modify your altar to be able to carry the thing that god sent you to do the general demands of an altar is already laid out are you getting what i'm saying but you need to know how to modify your altar to accommodate your own purpose and destiny. It is that modification that puts a label on you. It puts a responsibility on you. Because you would have noticed that human beings want to, they want to, um, what's it called? When somebody gives out the, the work to another person, it's not delegate. Let's, eh? Our source. Human beings want to outsource including knowledge that is of God. There are, there are several knowledge and wisdom that is from God that is patented to you. Are you getting it? The scripture said in the book of Revelations that there is a stone that is handed out to everybody. Only the owner knows what is inside. So even though there is the um, ultimate purpose of God can only be executed in a body and in a corporate sense. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it is not um, an attempt to remove your individuality. There is a time we did a study. Is it not true? We did a study on the difference between individuality and individualism. They are not the same. Are you getting what I'm saying? The scripture clearly allows for individuality what the scripture is against is individualism so when you read the scripture in the book of first corinthians chapter 12 13 14 there is an emphasis that is made on individuality operating within a body and a co-presence are you getting the point the scripture saying 
that the eye has its job, that the leg has its job, are they not different individuals? But they find accommodation within the body sense. That means God intentionally allowed you to be a different individual. A different individual. It is on the basis of individuality that there is a need for a function in unity. If all of us is I, who will now walk? Are you getting the point now? Follow me. So, you have to know that your individuality should not be lost in the corporate expression. It is even because of the matter of individuality and specificity in the execution of your mandate that we demand you to begin to do what every other person is doing. If it is not true that there is an individual dimension to the expression of your destiny, then the prayer of your mother and father and pastor should have catered for your destiny. You don't need to do anything. And I hope you know that's what everybody wants. No matter how much somebody pray for you, a day will come, you will have to pray for yourself. God ordained it that way. Even if you did not pray for something to happen, you will need to pray for you to know things about yourself. And I found out that the prayer of self-discovery can never be prayed by another person. The prayers of self-discovery is always prayed by the person that is involved. Are you with me? Now, it means that the responsibility of priesthood now falls upon us one after another. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It is, it is in that basis, on that basis that you cannot outsource priesthood. You can't outsource it. Every one of us have to be involved in priesthood now. That is the intention of God originally. Huh? Because it is when all of us get involved in priesthood that the priesthood of becoming gets activated. Outside the services of the um, ministry, a man engages the priestly ministry so that he can become what God ordained him to become. Are you getting the point? It is on that basis that your, your altar has to be modified. There is a general demand of setting up an altar. But according to your own destiny and ministry, according to your own career, there has to be a modification to that altar so that it can fit the exact thing that God wants to do. It is because of that that a responsibility is put upon you. No matter how much I pray for you, it cannot answer for it. Are you getting the point? Because consistent with your destiny, you have to understand how to set up an altar that can carry what God ordained for you. If that is true, it will mean that there is something you need to become on an individual basis. Are you getting it? So it is that becoming that is in the heart of God. Because beyond what you will do for God, what God wants you to become. Let me tell you why. The actions of God stems from who he, who he is. And he also desires that your own action comes from who you are, what you have become. I hope you know you can do what you are not as a human. That is actually the fourth lines of the selfish nature of man. But if God did something, he came from his nature. So God wants you to become by priesthood and then live and act and do ministry by priesthood. Unfortunately, the understanding that people have about priesthood is to do ministry by priesthood. If that only is the purpose of priesthood, then we don't need much prayers. If that only is the purpose of priesthood, then we don't need many priests. But the scripture has clearly shown us from the New Testament that the desire of God is the priesthood of all believers. Are you with me? If the priesthood is the priesthood of all believers, does it mean the same scripture said, are all apostles, are all teachers, are all? Meaning that, it, are you getting it? Remember that these are ministry offices. Are you with me? Yet the scripture is saying, not all. Yet, the priesthood is the priesthood of all believers. It will mean that there is a fundamental purpose of priesthood that is not necessarily service. The word ministry is serving. So the first desire of God as he was represented with the children of Israel is for them to become something. You have to become something in your own context that can represent God exactly the way he would have done it if he is the one that is there. So if God is the one that is in your exact situation, how will he have governed and then brought down his authority? No wonder the prayer 
the Lord's prayer said, Thy will be done on earth as it is what? Done in heaven. That's the desire of God. So, how will that happen? If it is a prayer, I hope you know that for every prayer you pray, there is a path that God really wanted you to pray. Play, play rather. So, even when you are praying a prayer concerning something and you feel it as if it doesn't concern you directly, for the fact that the body came to you, there is a known and unknown part that you are already playing in it. Are you with me? It is on that basis that there is become that person that God intends for you to become. Are you seeing it? In fact, it takes priesthood for you to enter into the revelation of whom you are supposed to be. No matter the book, if you read Brian Tracy, read Maxwell, where is you can one come now? Tell me 17 books I need to read so that I can discover myself. I want to discover myself, brother. Tell me 17 books I need to read. Bro, go and pray first. What you will discover at best is a miniature of who you will be. Hmm? The weakest part of you is the one that you will discover. The one that can't stand a demon in the night. The one that can't stand it. The one that can't resist sin. You will use book and knowledge. Fill your head. When a woman pass like this, you fall like a babu. You will just... With all the knowledge that professors have, why are they following small girls in campus? 60-something year old men, professors, several degrees, they are following... They can't control themselves with their knowledge. It means they are actually weak and babies. Small girls, 22 years, 21 years, they will come and rub your hair and say, Prof. Prof. Small girl. <laughs> I want to ask, is that man an elder? <laughs> He's a babe. A 70-year-old child. Are you seeing it? <laughs> 